Welcome YouTube to another D&D Fridays. Today we'll be talking about, talking about feats and just all about what type of, what type of special effects that they can really um, offer within the whole D&D um, &D, um, world. Now um, before we get into that don't forget um, definitely hit that subscribe button down before down before down below I mean good grief I need to speak in feet <laughs> um, also hit that notification bell to really let yourself know whenever new videos come out and definitely type in down below on in the comments depend on what what type of feats that you like and what what your thoughts are on some of the different feats and that type of stuff without further ado let's continue in and dive into the world of feats now um, feats within D&D &D are generally a little bit of extra power that you get during your um, ASI improvements so during those levels you can either get a plus to some of your stats or you can pick up uh, one of the feats that you're um, that you can definitely pick up um, so they're just to let you know that there's that they're definitely not free. You definitely have to give up a stat boost to get them. So keep that in mind on what type of character you're trying to come across and play a, and portray as. And um, in case anybody's having a hard time, that's the type of feat that we're talking about, not the ones that you're standing up on. We save that for medical YouTube channels that I'm sure there's a lot of in today's day and age. Yes, please save them for other places. Absolutely. <laughs> now, um, between the PHP, Xanathars, and Tasha's, there are a whole plethora of feats that you can choose from. Um, so let's let's begin and and get into them. And of course, not all. Unfortunately, not all feats are created the same. Some are definitely a lot more powerful than others. And on the same thing, uh, same tune, some feats are a lot more combat based, while some feats are a little bit more RP based or exploration based. So definitely keep that in mind. And there's a lot of different, um, and there's also what's called a full feat versus a half feat. A full feat usually offers a lot of cool features, while a half feat is a little small cool thing plus a one point bump to to a certain stat. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, so, coming from the PHP, um, the first feat that's probably one of the more, probably in the second tier of popular feats is the alert feat. Now, what makes the alert feat so good is it has three different uh, effects that, that you can possibly have. First is the static effect of an extra plus five to your initiative rolls, which are really good, especially for your rogues, your rangers. Um, your support folks, that type of stuff. Also, you can't be surprised while you're unconscious. And other creatures well, don't have a advantage on attack rolls um, as against you as a result of being unseen by you. Yeah. Yep. I think you meant to say conscious, not unconscious. I think if you're already unconscious, then you can't really be that that alert. But hey, maybe you're good. <laughs> Maybe you're good, you know, you got a light ear when you're sleeping, so. <laughs> I'm glad you caught that. That means that you're alert. Yeah. All right, I've got one feet now. Yeah. Well, you must be a variant human <laughs> or custom lineage. I'm variant something, that is for sure. <laughs> so, that's, so that's a pretty good feat if you're trying to go before other folks. Um, it's personally one of my favorite, especially for monks and the like. I really like the plus five to, to initiative out of that feat. I think that's extremely, extremely useful, extremely powerful. Yeah, and I think one of the best places to slap that on is if you're playing some sort of tank character, because tanks typically don't have high decks, so that plus five can really put a good positive number on your initiative roll. Yep. Next up, we have the Athlete feat, which is our first half feat. So first off, it gives you a plus one to either your strength or your dexterity score. So it can really even out one of those scores that you need. And when you're prone, 
you can you also can use five feet of movement to stand up instead of half of your movement so that could be potentially useful if you're always finding yourself down or prone I should say also climbing doesn't cost you extra movement if you make a long jump or a high jump after moving only five feet um, you can you can make that jump after moving only five feet instead of ten feet so it has some smaller but helpful effects depending on what type of stuff that you're trying to do yep yeah this this seems I don't think this is you know I don't think a lot of people are going to invest in this feat unless it fits with their character right but it's an athletic type of character so but there are some useful things in there for sure yeah next up is the actor feet another half feet that but this one you probably aren't going to see too often but it could be useful in a heart in a rp heavy game as you get a plus one to your charisma advantage on deception and performance checks to pass to try to pass off as a different person and you can uh, attempt to mimic the speech of another person that you heard of at, for at least a minute um as long as you have a um, as long as your deception check beats out the opponent's insight check. So that could potentially be useful if you're trying to sneak your way into like a party that you're not on the VIP list of or something like that. So that so you might see it a lot if you're doing some like candle keep mysteries um stuff or anything like that. Maybe a knowledge cleric might have some use in that, or maybe a rogue. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think this is probably something that will be used more in the RP, RP heavy type of game than than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have the charger feet. Um, you can use your action to when you use your action to dash, you can make a melee weapon or shove a creature as a bonus action, which could potentially be useful if you're trying to close the gap. Um, and if you move at least 10 feet in a straight line. Um, you can either gain a plus five bonus to the damage roll if you choose to make an uh, an attack, or you can push the target up to ten feet away if you decide to shove the target. So, I, I find this as a useful feat if you consistently find yourself placed like sixty feet away from enemies and stuff like that, where you gotta spend a turn to dash up to the target. Now you you can potentially do something on that turn instead of just dashing. Right. But this does clash if you happen to be playing a subclass or a class that uses their bonus action quite a bit, like maybe a rogue or a ranger might may or may not find this as useful. So definitely keep that in mind. I think this probably fits, you know, with a barbarian or or a fighter type class, right? Especially when they feel like they're away from the, the action a lot and want to try and get there it gives them the ability not not just dash but then oh I can actually take a small swing instead of well that's my turn yeah which when those happens it's always a, a unfortunate and boring way of taking a turn right. Here, give them another option yeah. especially in an era where a lot of combats are generally over within like four or five turns. Yep. Next up is probably one of the, one of the more popular uh, feats, crossbow expert. Whenever you're um, using any sort of crossbows or um, or bows, short bows or long bow, um, you as long if you're within five feet, then you don't have disadvantage on those ranged weapons. Um, if you happen to have a crossbow, you ignore the loading property of that, which is good for fighters and folks like that that have um, extra attacks. And then also, if you're using a hand crossbow and you attack with, uh, with a one-handed weapon, which is typically going to be that hand crossbow, you can take a bonus action to fire from that hand crossbow. So you're basically having the ranged version of two, two weapon fighting pretty much. So it's a, it's definitely a good feat to have if you're going as that ranged fighter. 
I think the other the other bullet here on um, you don't uh, don't get this advantage if you're within five feet of a hostile creature. I think is also extremely useful. Right? There there are many times where you can't see, you can't disengage or you know retreat. You know those that ten feet to be able to whoo, shoot your crossbow. If you have this this feet, then you don't have to even worry about it. Right? You can just kind of stick it in their face and yeah. pull that pull that trigger. Right? One of my favorite things to do is is if the wizard in a party or the sorcerer or some, somebody like that happens to cast like whole person, Tasha's hideous laughter, or whatever it may be to put somebody prone, now you can just walk right up to them, point blank them, and now instead of having disadvantage, you now have advantage on your attack. Exactly. Yep. So, and I know we're going off on a little bit of a little bit out of order, but crossbow expert pairs really well with the sharpshooter feet and with that feat it does a few different things first off um, whenever you take the long range um, number of a ranged attack which is the second um, range the second number after the little um, uh, dash it's basically you don't have to worry about disadvantage for your long range attacks now you also don't have to worry about half cover and three quarters cover for your ranged attacks. Now, now keep in mind all these ranged attacks are dealing with range, range weapon attacks, so your bows and your crossbows, so no spell attacks can benefit from this. And then also, you can, um, before you take the attack with one of these ranged weapons, you could say that you're taking the sharpshooter penalty, which is just the minus five to attack rolls, plus ten to that damage roll if you hit. Yep, that ten extra damage is pretty sweet. Yep, it's really good. So the crossbow expert sharpshooter combination is pretty potent combination, especially if you if you have the archery fighting style to add plus two to that. So that's definitely a pretty common combo right there. Yeah, I think, I think the sharpshooter is a really good feat. Yep, just in general, but. Especially when you're pairing it with with a ranger that wants to be long, long range anyway, I think that just bumps them up to the kind of the, the next level for their attacks. So. Exactly. Next up is defensive duelist. This is the first feat that has a requirement before you can take the feat, as you much must, must have a dexterity of 13 or higher to take this feat. So keep that in mind. Um, and as long as you're wielding a finesse weapon. Um, that you're proficient within, and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack, potentially making it um, miss. So that could be uh, quite useful, um, depending on the character that you're on. You're on a non-spellcaster fighter, wielding a rapier or a short sword or something like that, now you have a good um, defensive reaction to take now. Yep. I think I think I think this is a, a pretty de decent feat. I don't I don't know how often it gets used, but you know, having being able to essentially have a shield effect without having to have a spellcaster, right? Without being a spellcaster, I think is kind of it, it, I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Next up, we have Dual Wielder. This is the feat that you want to take if you want to two-weapon fight or have weapons in both hands, per se, as um, it gives you plus one to your AC as long as you're wielding separate melee weapons in both hands, so two short swords, whatever it may be. Um, you can also use the two-weapon fight in even if the melee weapons that you're holding aren't light. So now you can dual wield rapiers or long swords or anything like that, um, which can add a little bit of damage. Um, so it, it's really good. And then you can also draw or stow both of those weapons at the same same time, which is which is going to make a huge difference. Um, Next up, we have Dungeon Delver. Now, Dungeon Delver is one of the more exploration type of uh, feats that are out there as you have advantage on perception and investigation 
checks to detect secret doors. Uh, you have advantage on saving throws to avoid or resist traps, which are helpful. Um, you have resistance to damage dealt by traps. And you can also search for traps while traveling at a slow, uh, normal pace instead of just at a slow pace. So this might be helpful for maybe a rogue to help spot this type of stuff to disarm or something like that. I'm not sure how useful it is, um, out, unless you're playing in a dungeon heavy sort of module or campaign. Like this might be useful in maybe a uh, Tome of the Nine Gods or something like that. Um, Tome of Annihilation or something like that. I see this being useful basically only for those, you know, those characters that have high sleight of hand, right, type of, those type of characters, um, or are proficient with lockpicks. Um, that's probably, probably a better example, proficient with lockpicks, right? So mostly your rogues. Um, but I see it being useful before you hit, I believe it's level seven when you get your expertise. Level six. Level six, rogues. thanks. Yeah. Um, I think after that, this sort of loses some of its oomph, right? If it, if it had any oomph to begin with, uh, because you basically are, you know, you've double, you got your double proficiency now on, on those types of, those types of checks for the traps, right? Um, yeah, I agree, but many rogues are probably going to expertise some skill to help them out, whether it's sleight of hand, thieves tools, perception, something like that. Right. And level seven, you get your evasion, um, which most a lot of traps are probably going to be dex based for their saving throws. So that's yeah. going to really help in case something goes wrong. So I, I agree. This is probably really good if you know you're going to have a, a low level dungeon delver type of thing. But um, if you have a, a rogue that's going at least seven levels, it may or might may not be super useful to have. I mean, even with saying all of that, right, if you want your wizard to be really good at finding traps, right, this would be the feat for you. But I think in general, most people probably stay away from this, this feat. Yeah. And the next one we have durable. So you can plus one your constitution score with it. And whenever you roll hit die to regain um, hit points, which is typically during short rest, um, the minimum you can regain is twice your constitution modifier. So it really helps out. It really raises that baseline of what you can restore during a short rest by a little bit. Um, for me, I really see this being a little bit more helpful on the high constitution sort of um, character, so maybe your barbarians or your fighters or something like that, where maybe now your base is a plus is 10 now because you have a plus 5 con modifier, so now you, you can regain some decent amount instead of just saying, oh, I hope I don't roll a 1 on my roll now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as this technically says, the minimum you can regain so you can still go for that higher thing knowing that you have a decent amount of HP that you can recover as a fallback. Yeah. Yep. Next is Elemental Adept. Uh, it has the prereq of you need to be able to cast at least one spell. So whether you're a spellcaster, you have the magic initiate feed, something or another, you need to be able to cast a spell first. And what this does is you choose either acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. And for whichever type you choose, um, your spells that, that deal that type of damage ignore resistance to that damage. Now, if a creature is immune to that damage, it's still immune to it. So keep that in mind. But also, if you happen to deal dam that same top damage and you have any roll any ones for that damage roll, they're treated as a two, so that could be pretty useful. Now, the cool thing is you can pick up this this feat multiple times as long as you choose a different damage type. I probably wouldn't recommend picking it up more than once because there's other feats and stats and stuff you can pick up, and like I said, it's you have to really know what you're going for, and there's a lot of other good stuff that you'll probably need. 
Yeah, I, I think I think the cool feature is that you can pick this again and again and kind of just make this, uh, you know, spellcaster that basically raises it, his floor on all of his spells, right? Mm -hmm. To to by one, and then um, you can uh, remove the resistance to all of the different, most of the da damage types, right? There's it's not all of them, but all of the elemental damage types. I, I think there's some flavor here. Um, I, I agree with you that I don't know if you want to take it more than once, but if you want to go wild and crazy, right, you can you could do that do that sort of thing and make a, a, a unique character with that. Exactly. Next up, we have the grappler feat. You need a strength of at least 13. Um, advantage on attack rolls against a grappled creature, and you can use an action to try to pin the creature. You basically make another grapple check. If it succeeds, both you and the creature are strained until the grapple ends. Could be useful to help stop uh, somebody, but there's, there may be other ways of going about things that might be better. So so if you're going for some specific grappling build, th this is probably needed, but otherwise I would probably stay away from it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that assessment. Very, uh... Totally. Um, if you've got, you know, if your character's some sort of bar barroom brawler sort of sort of character, right? This this probably makes sense again from an RP perspective. But utility, you know, and especially in mid to late late portions of the game, eh, doesn't doesn't excite me. So. Yeah. Next one is Great Weapon Master. This is basically the melee version of Sharpshooter as whenever you um, attack with a heavy weapon, a heavy two-handed weapon like Great Axe, Great Sword, or Pole Arm, um, you basically take a minus five to the attack roll, plus 10 to the damage roll. And if you happen to score either a critical hit or you happen to down something, you can make an, you can make an additional attack as a bonus action. So that could be really good for your barbarians, your fighters, paladins, folks like that that are attacking with these big heavy weapons yeah and i think this is probably one of the again just like sharpshooter one of the best feats one of the more powerful feats and just gives you that that extra oomph um i like the fact that this gives you that extra bonus attack right if you take something down i, I think that's a really really neat spin on on this versus um you know the the sharpshooter you don't have to worry about three quarters cover and stuff like that i i like the 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 extra bonus action you know, attack personally, but it's a good, it's a good feat. Yep. Next one is the healer feat. Um, you can use a healer's kit to stabilize a dying creature and that dying creature gains a single hit point. So that could be good if you don't have any like healers in the group or anything like that. And as an action, you can spend a use of the healer's kit um, and restore D6 plus four HP plus additional HP equals to equal to that specific creatures max hit die um, but if you use this that creature can't benefit from the same thing until it finishes a short or long rest so it can be pretty useful if you don't really have a healer in your in your party yeah yeah I, I see I see uh, this is something that kind of covers that gap if for some reason you don't have anybody that has any healing spells in your party uh, again, I think most parties are going to have some sort of healer, so I don't know how often this is used, but it is there for that, that stopgap measure if needed. Yeah. Next is hev heavily armored. So you need to have proficiency in medium armor before you can pick this up. And what it does is not only do you gain proficiency with heavy armor, but also you can increase your strength score by plus one. So... It might it may be helpful, maybe you're playing like a specific type of cleric that doesn't get heavy armor, you can pick this up to be a little more tanky or whatever it may be. So Yeah. Yeah, I, again I think this is one of one of those feats where I'm not sure how useful it is overall. Um, it is there, you know, right, if in case the situation does come up as as you said, but for me I'm probably staying away from this one, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, as many times he, as most times you can just say, all right, I'll take a 
quick level dip in Paladin or Fighter or something like that to pick it up. <laughs> but exactly. depending on your character um, goals, you may or may not need this. 100%. 100%. Next, though, is Heavy Armor Master. So if you happen to have proficiency with Heavy Armor already as a prereq, what this does do is it plus ones your strength score. And as long as you're wearing Heavy Armor, any sort of bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage that you take from non-magical weapons is reduced by three. So for this, I think it is a very good feat early game, first six, seven, eight, nine levels or so. But once you get into the teens, um, teen levels, I think it falls, it kind of falls off a bit as a lot more stuff are. Or dealing with um, like spells, magical effects, their attacks might be magical by nature or something like that. So while you still might see some use out of it late game, it's going to be a little bit rarer that this will actually come up than early game. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great assessment there. I, I agree. I think early game, it's very useful late game, not so much because like you said, everything is magic basically <laughs> as you get towards the end of the game. Um, or as you get higher up uh, in the higher levels in the game, I should say. Yeah. Um, again, I, I put this in the, personally, I put this sort of in the same category as heavily armored. Like, it's there if I feel like I really need it, but eh. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're level 19, level 20, and something is attacking you with slashing damage and it's not magical, I think it's probably going to be either all right, this fight is going to be way too easy for us, probably. Or something hasn't been revealed and I'm scared out of my wits. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to be one of those two extremes. Yep. The next is Inspire and Leader. You need a Charisma of 13 or higher. I think this is one a uh, pretty decent um, feat as, uh, as you pretty much spend 10 minutes inspiring your compadres, whatever it may be, and um, when you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures, which can include yourself, um, as long as they're within 30 feet of you and can see or hear you and can understand you. And basically what it does is each one of those creatures gain temporary HP equal to your level plus your charisma mod. Um, but they can't re um, benefit from this feat more than once per short or long rest, so keep that in mind. But this is, I think this is a good fight if you have some preparation, like you know you're about to go into a difficult battle or something like that, and you have those 10 minutes to prep, you can just say, all right, I'm going to inspire and leader, this is what I'm going to say, now myself and my party has an extra 15 temp HP or whatever it may be. Yeah, I, I think this, the useful the, the usefulness of this feat increases as your level kind of goes up because you know it's temp hit points equal to your level plus your your charisma modifier, right? So if you get a little bit higher, you gain more and more of that temp hit points, which I think is great going into some sort of big battle. This gives you that extra little cushion, and I, I think it is it's it's useful. I think it's I think it's one of those feats that you don't always look at. Right to take, especially because you know you want to. It doesn't sound necessarily that cool, but I think it has a very useful. Uh, it's very useful in, in in later game situations. Yep, exactly. And I'm I'm waiting for my my inspiring speech leader. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me about. Um... 15 minutes, let me call up Morgan Freeman or Samuel L. Jackson and we'll have a pretty inspiring speech. Wow, that went from like super calm to dropping dropping F bombs there. So. Hey, who knows? Some, some people might be inspiring to different people. A absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you go from Inspiring by persuasion to inspiring by intimidation. <laughs> Both can inspire, that's true. <laughs> Next up we have Keen Mind. So you can increase your intelligence score by one. Um, you always know which way is north. You know the number of hours left before the next sunrise or sunset. And you can accurately recall anything you've seen or heard within the past month. 
So this is more of the um, exploration RP type of feat, but yeah. honestly, I don't think it, the effects really don't come up that that much. As it's because I really think that you always know which way is north. It's like I think I think that could be incorporated in like a survival check or something like that. Um, you know how many hours are left before sunrise, sunset. I think that may be incorporated into like a nature check. I can I can somewhat see that. So I feel like a lot of this stuff you can do in other ways um, pretty easily. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Right, I I think this would become useful again, like the 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 dungeon delver feat that if you're spending a lot of time in dungeons, you know, under or underground or somewhere where you can't see the sun, you know, the sun, the sunrise and the sunset, you know, potentially depending on your campaign, being able to know what direction you're going in is, is going to be useful. But I, I agree with you. I don't know if how much, uh, the utility of this feat is needed. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. I, I agree. Because with the name of Keen Mind, I'm kind of expecting so much more. That's exactly what I was just going to say. So. Yeah. Next up, we have Lightly Armored. Um, so basically, um, you can increase your strength or dex by plus one, and you gain proficiency with Light Armor. Hands down, this is only useful for sorcerers and wizards that are not multi-classing into anything else, because everybody else has at least proficiency in Light Armor. And those two classes already have access to mage armor. So it's like, yep. honestly, I can either take mage armor, multi-class into something else, or just be what those two classes are meant to do and just stay in the back lines and not be hit as often. Hide, hide behind the rock and stick your, head, your hand out every once in a while and throw, throw out that fireball. Yep, mm -hmm. got it. <laughs> so honestly, I really don't think this is a useful thing because, I mean, of course, as long as you have a good dungeon master, you're going to be targeted by attacks every once in a while, but you're a sorcerer and, or, and a wizard with a d6 hit die. You should be doing everything in your power, power not to be hit in the first place anyways because you don't have the HP to back it up. I, I agree. I, again, this... this... This falls into the the heavily armored, you know, category. Also, like, eh, doesn't this does not excite me? You know? Yeah, and with this, it's unless you get some crazy magic item, it's only going to add plus one or plus two to your um, AC. And I rather just pick up either mage armor or the shield spell, which both sorcerers and wizards have access to both of those spells. Yep, yep. totally. <laughs> so, I think out of it. All the feats, the lightly armored feat is probably one of those few feats that you should really stay away from more than anything else, I th personally think. Now that we covered a good chunk of the feats from the PHB, uh, we'll, we'll see you next week when we take a look at the second part of the feats from the PHB, and um, we'll see how everything works out from there. And until the, until next time, as always, keep your your lives geeky, and remember all of your feet, both the D and D and the medical versions of them. Bye, everyone. <laughs>